Recordology. Hey everybody, welcome back to Recordology. And for those of you that joined our live, not the one where we were waiting for the B-17 to take off, but the one where we were doing the live teardown and review and all that stuff, that was cool. It's kind of like one of these videos, but live. And I thought that was fun. I got a lot of positive feedback, so we may do that again in the future. But today, we are here to look at this. Now, you may be saying to yourself, wait a minute, didn't we have that on the show a couple weeks back? Yes, we did, um, a little bit, but we just kind of looked at it and said what it was. We didn't really review it, and we certainly didn't ever do everything that we're going to do to it today. We're going to fully test it out. We're going to do everything from uh, built-in recording, built-in microphone recording test, external microphone tests, uh, we're going to play back on the speaker that's built in on external speakers. We're going to do a direct feed. We're going to do all kinds of cool. We're going to tear it apart too. So we're going to do everything to this little guy right here. So I thought that we would have this episode be the first in a series that I like to call Tales from the Thrift Store. Items from the thrift store. What are they? What's the history? What significance do they have in our world? I mean, here we are looking at something from the 80s. Not many people, relatively speaking, on Earth still have this in mind. You know what I mean? This is long forgotten, and that's why it ends up at the thrift store. But to you and me, people who care is a treasure. So what is this? This is the realistic so it's Radio Shack. Realistic Mini Set 9 tape recorder. Now you may be looking at this and you're saying, so that's a weird form factor. I assume by the name it's miniature. It's not like a micro cassette or a mini cassette format. It uses regular full-size compact cassette tapes. This, by the way, is yield test tape, which if you remember from a recent test, we decided there's damage to the tape on side B, so I flipped it over to side, well, it's damage on side B, so I flipped it over to side A, okay. So anyway, um, what's the deal with this? Why does it exist and what's the history? Well, stand by, because I got the whole lowdown. So in this era, by the way, this was produced for Realistic, Tandy Corporation from 1982 to 1987. Having a run that long really tells you that it was pretty successful. I mean, if it wasn't that successful, it wouldn't have lasted five years. So the fact that it was on the market that long tells you something. So why did it succeed? Well, part of the answer to that question may lie with the fact that this was the average form factor for a tape recorder of that era. Now, we're talking about, we're talking about a tape recorder here that's designed to play back and record tapes in mono. In this case, it was also used as a computer storage device for software is playback device that's a separate discussion but think of this as a shoebox cassette player which at its heart it really is and this is of that same era actually also by radio shack although i somebody told me these are made by panasonic i believe but anyway all that aside this is what a tape recorder looked like in those days we're not talking about like a stereo tape deck for high fidelity music listening we're talking about something for dictation for school for, you know, just recording sounds. My dad carried one of these to Hawaii on a vacation. Carried this uh, this size and probably as heavy as this as well. And we were like, Dad, what are you doing? Why are you carrying this around? He just wanted to record ambient sounds. And this is what he had available to do it with a little built-in microphone. So he carried this thing along and had produced, you know, a couple of tapes of what have become known as classic audio in our family, eminently quotable. So documenting the surroundings, the hotels, the airport traffic, all kinds of stuff like that. So this device was much more akin to this than it was a high fidelity tape deck. But I wanted to show you how much smaller it was in comparison, although it did use the same size tapes, which is pretty amazing. And like that deck, it was mono. What this really did was it got tape decks for the use of dictation and you know the purposes we talked about, almost down to the size of a Walkman type of device. This one is one of the new Redicus units with a built-in speaker as well. But just from a form factor standpoint, this was considered a, a super compact unit 
pocket sized almost. You can see it includes a wrist strap so you can have this around your wrist and you know go on about your day. It's like it's like five pounds. Can you imagine? There's no way. Like, or if you get so angry at it, you can chuck it, but it's kind of like a Wii remote wrist strap <laughs> to save you from your own anger. So it's a unique form factor, and it is a, a stop in the evolution on the way to something like this, an actual micro cassette recorder. Yes, we reviewed this too. You'll find a wealth of shows in our 800 plus episodes of Recordology. Somebody said the other day, it made me laugh, they said in regards to our new um, Vinyl Nation program, by the way, you're invited to join. We have an extra bonus show for Vinyl Nation members on Fridays. And they said to me, they said, well, I don't know if I'm, if I, I'd like to see some more free shows before you uh, start charging for that Friday show. And I said, well, that's absolutely. Check out the over 800 free shows that we've posted so far and two more per week ongoing that we'll continue to do. Anyway, all that to say, we have a lot of shows out there. Vinyl Nation, are you a member yet? Probably not. Join us. You don't have to wait until Sunday if you're a member of the Vinyl Nation because they get a show in a mere two days. By the end of the week, they're going to have another show. So I believe that this device was part of the evolution to the most compact, small dictation and playback devices primarily for speech that could be made. But this device retained the uh, form factor, or they retained the uh, compatibility with these tapes. So that's kind of how it fits in the market. This was priced at $59.95 when this came out. Comparatively, the shoebox recorders were a little cheaper, like $39 to $59 range, whereas this started at $59.95. Um, has a moving coil magnetic speaker, a plastic case. It's built like a tank. It's battery operated. Let's look at the controls. We have a, a volume control and a tone control, the predecessor of bass and treble, kind of all in one. You can run it off of AC power, although it was truly designed to be run off of batteries. It takes four double A's. I believe that's a little potentiometer to adjust the um, motor speed or just a motor speed adjustment. On the back here, you can see compact cassette recorder. Miniset 9, model 14-812, 6-volt unit, manufactured in Singapore for Radio Shack, a division of Tandy Corporation. I think we'll be able to get into this unit, so I want to see kind of how it works. Um, on this side, we have an earphone, so that means that's basically a headphone output, but in mono. It does have a remote control adjustment if your mic has a remote control, and then obviously a mic input. Up top here, we have... Uh, the cassette door, a nice green contrast panel there so that you can see easily how much tape you have left on the spools. And then it's going to be kind of hard to uh, get. This is always a hard shot to get, but take my word for it. Let's see if I can actually zoom in. Can you believe iPhone 13s are coming out? Somebody told me that. I was like, no, they're not. The, the 12 is still brand new. And sure enough, it's been a year. Okay, I can't get that shot. This is a mono unit. Sorry, I can't get that shot there. So we got the pinch roller, you've got the cap stand, all the stuff that you get with a tape recorder. We've got a mechanical tape counter. We have a record battery light and the built-in microphone. One of the features that this unit had was live cueing. So basically, let me show you how that works. So let's put in your tape. Today, we're gonna use a couple different tapes. One of them is Patsy Cline's Heartaches. This is not the album Heartaches. This is an MCA reissue from the 80s essentially a greatest hits. And by the way, today is Patsy Cline's birthday. Her real name, Virginia Hensley. Patsy Cline was just a stage name. So um, when you're playing this he heavily copyrighted music and you're like, you know what? I wanna skip to the next song, but I'm not sure where it ends. Or more specifically, I'm skipping through some dictation here you can fast forward in real time, as it were, and hear that sound. And then you can go in reverse, too. So the idea is like, let's find the beginning of that song. Where's the beginning of that song? I know it's around here somewhere. Where is it now? Still here singing, still here something. Oh, silence. So we knew we got to the end there. It essentially allows you to cue up, hence the name cue, whatever you want to listen to. So. That is, that's the, that's the basic operation of this deck. Let's go ahead and um, 
do a little test recording with it, shall we? For that, we're gonna use ye old test tape, like I said before. Set Patsy Klein off to the side. People that think that she's just a country music singer have a lot to discover when they start digging into her skills and story. So we've got this queued up to the very beginning and I'm just going to play and record. Let's see if it's one touch. Yep, so that means I can push the record button only instead of play record. And it mechanically pushes down both. Okay, this is a test recording on the Realistic Mini Set 9. I am about a foot from the microphone that's built into this unit, testing sound quality, fidelity, hiss, noise, all of that good stuff. So let's see, let's see what we got. Rewind and playback. So let's see how the built-in mic does. Ooh, that's bad. I can't even hear it. Wow, not sure why, the mic might be dead. I'm not sure. So let's take it to the next level. Let's use an external mic. As you can see, this does have or had the jack for the remote. It would have lined up right there. That basically allowed the microphone to control the start and stop when you were recording. So using this mic, I'm gonna hold this close to my mouth. This is a Panasonic microphone. So we're gonna hit play record down there. And we are going to test. So I am speaking now directly into the microphone. Hopefully this records, because if it doesn't, it's probably not the microphone that was bad on the unit. It could be the record head or something in the component level stuff within this unit. It's hard to say, but let's, let's find out. So I'm gonna rewind and play back. Let's see what happens. Very faint. So that tells me that tells me that there's something wrong from a component standpoint. The tabs aren't punched out on the tape. They're clear, but they're there. Hmm. So she doesn't like to record very well. Okay, that's okay. Let's, we're just testing it out. So let's do this. I was gonna play back on a, an external speaker the recording we made. So instead what we'll do is we'll play back pre-recorded cassette on the speaker. So we're just gonna use my little Bluetooth speaker there. While I'm getting this all squared away, I wanna put this in front of you. This is an amazing, amazing audio program to listen to it. It's from the Ken Burns Civil War documentary, which is you know pretty famous in its own right. But this is the narration of the book read mostly by Ken Burns himself. And I remember literally mowing lawns as a, as a junior hire to save up for this. All right, I'm gonna plug into the earphones. This will obviously be in mono, but so is this video. And just listening to it over and over and over and over again, it's an amazing, amazing program. Highly recommended for you history buffs. So I've made a couple of recommendations on content for you today. All right, let's go ahead. Laid so thickly in some places, Grant remembered, wow. it would have been possible to walk across the clearing in any direction, stepping on dead bodies without a oh. foot touching the ground. The sound, quality, the sound quality is amazing. Let's flip this over. A stretch seasoned troops would routinely cover in half the time later in the war. Absolutely sharp fidelity. Sounds great. So... Even in mono, it's a, it's a quality unit, which, you know, in this era, we expected that. We, you know, these days we're surprised when something works. We're like, wow, it actually works. Shouldn't be that way. But back in, you know, the 80s, it was, or the, even the 90s, pretty much any time before today, it was, you know, expected that products, especially you spent 60 bucks on something like this. It better work. Otherwise, you take your money back, right? You wouldn't just be like, eh. It's almost like everything these days is a consumable item, which is a shame. It's really, really a shame. Okay, um, one more thing I want to mention before I forget is my dad was really into stuff like this that was compact. He loved the fact that there was compact form factors. He loved the smallest cell phones, 
Still does. He loves the smallest electronics, smallest wallets. To him, that's an asset. So I definitely think there's a lot of folks like that that appreciate compact pocket size stuff. And this reminds me of that. Okay, time for a direct feed recording test. And for that, we will be using Voltron, Defender of the Universe, Lotor's secret weapon. I want to thank Peter, aka Fartemark, for sending us this awesome, very 80s tape. This is cool stuff. So I've got the earphone out, so it's a mono output, the volume set to about 80% to approximate line level. Going into the line level input on my Reticus V115. Love this unit. And yeah, so let's go ahead and see what we got. So I'm gonna hit play. And we can hear the sound through the speaker of this now. It's distorting a little bit, so I'm going to turn it down. Let's see. Prince Lotor sent a thought message to the clone. Send a thought message. You must win this fight at once. If you won't, the Rovies will. Okay. And I'll have him take care of you, too. So now we're recording. Let's give it a listen. The clone shouted up at his... You sit where it's safe and tell a real soldier how to fight? I won't listen to you, Lotor. Keep listening. Puzzled. Lotor's Lotor? That can't be. Unless he's a clone. That would explain it. I thought it would be smart to do all of our tests before we take it apart. Now that we've done that, just in case it doesn't go back together. Now that we've done that, I'm going to remove the batteries. Like I said before, it runs on four double A's. And I found this in the battery compartment. Inspector IA6. It's pretty common for one of the uh, screws for the cabinet, as it were, <laughs> to be located back there. So let me go ahead and remove all the screws and we'll take a peek inside. Okay. That actually went a lot faster and easier than I expected it to. So, let's see what we got. Ah, cool. Look at this. I know I always say cool when I <laughs> pull the lid off. I'm just fascinated by this stuff. Look at all the belts. They're in great condition, nice and you know rubbery. They don't feel brittle. They haven't decomposed. There's the main motor. Some shielding over the board here. Really cool. I'm not going to take it down any further than that. There's a flywheel, an actual metal flywheel. Even that Pioneer deck we looked at the other day didn't have a metal flywheel. Quality components, right? There's the back of the speaker. Can't quite see any branding on that speaker from this angle. Let's see if we can see what brand of the motor is. I see Japan on there. But that's about it. Very compact, you guys. Very, very compact. But it works. And it works well. Well, except for the recording. The recording feature doesn't work. It could be a capacitor. There's a lot of things that could be. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed this look at this realistic mini set recorder, the Mini Set 9. Thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you have a wonderful and blessed rest of the week again. If you want to show in a couple of days, don't forget to join the Vinyl Nation for an extra weekly show and oh so much more details can be found below but mostly i just want to say thank you for being here god bless you take care of each other and we'll see you next time happy record honey